Getting the Winchester X-150 muzzleloader ready for deer. William Hovey Smith, 2021. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And I'm in the process of getting ready for this year's muzzleloading season. I typically hunt with muzzleloading guns all season long. And we're in archery season now in Georgia. And for the upcoming muzzleloading season, I'm going to be using some new bullets introduced by Power Belt and CBA. In particular, these are the ELR, meaning extra long range, uh, projectiles. And I'll show you some of them in a little bit. Uh, right now, they are available in 40 caliber, 45 caliber, and 50 caliber. Now, the 40 caliber is a rather strange beast in the muzzleloading world, but they are putting a 229 grain bullet out in 40 caliber, and here it is. And you'll notice it's very long for the caliber. Consequently, it has good, very good, long-range characteristics, and I've shot and hit with a gun using this bullet at 650 yards. Well, I don't shoot much at 650 yards. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of my stuff is done 65 yards and closer, uh, much less 650. Powerbell also has a 45 caliber, 291 grain bullet here of the same design. Now many more people own 45 caliber rifles than own 40s. So uh, this is a projectile that will extend your flat shooting trajectory. And if you really, really know your gun and really, really practice at it at longer ranges, you can do good with this bullet uh, out to 300 yards and sometimes better. Hmm. Okay. Now, most people own 50 caliber guns. So this is the 50 caliber projectile. It is 334 grains. Although not as ballistically efficient as the 40 caliber, it does extend your flat shooting trajectory a little bit, uh, meaning if you zero at, say, two inches high at 25 yards, then you would probably be able to aim at your animal and hit it, say, out to 150 yards without employing much in the way of holdover. And that's what we're going to see if we can do. I'm not going to try to shoot at 600 yards with this 50 caliber slug. Uh, I have no need of it, and, uh, but if it will allow me to make quick shots without having to worry so much about holdover, then so much the better. Uh, the load I'm going to be using is Blackhorn 209 here. Uh, the 209 is a nice, clean burning powder, and it's what CBA particularly recommends for their guns. Well, I try to shoot a company's bullets with a company's guns, uh, figuring that, well, they'll probably design for them, if for no other reason. Well, we have something a little unusual, and perhaps a little better for the work at hand. This gun is a Winchester and so marked as the X-150. It was made for Winchester by CBA and incorporated some design elements that CBA and Winchester jointly did, including an excellent composite stock, a very nice barrel, uh, 
and providing good accuracy. Also, some reasonable weight. This gun weighs, hunt ready, uh, approximately nine pounds. So, I can shoot a reasonable load in this gun and without getting excessive recoil. I'm not going to shoot uh, a very heavy charge of powder, the equivalent of 150 grains of black powder, and a fairly heavy bullet, 334 grains, out of a five and a half or six pound gun. Uh, I'll let you other folks do that one. Now, for backup, this being muzzle loading season, we have our Ruger O Army, which you might not have seen before. But I have several videos about how this gun came to be, why I modified it, put a 14-inch barrel on it, put a scope on it, and it also, incidentally, has a cylinder for 45 long coat. So I'm able to use it in a variety of settings. This being muzzle-loading season, however, coming up, uh, it is loaded as a muzzle loader, and it's using Kato Ajama's 255 grain bullet for the old army and 35 grains of triple seven, which makes for a good, fast, and killing load. How far do I shoot with it? Well, uh, approximately 50 yards or so. Um, I can stretch it a little bit further, but I'm not going to try a uh, game at 100 yards with it. Uh, yes, if I really practiced and really did it, I probably could, but no, um, I'll keep mine 60 yards and closer to the gun. So that's what we're going to be shooting this year. Uh, I'm going to take the Winchester out and shoot it in. And the way we're going to work this, this is all you need to hunt with. You don't need to carry a whole huge bag full of junk. Uh, we have our pre-weighed powder charges, so I know exactly how much powder is going in there. We have five bullets. We have shotgun primers. We have a convenient little loader here, which is nice uh, in cold weather in particular uh, for putting the 209 primers into the chamber of a gun. We also have a short starter, and I've modified it by drilling it out in the front so that it will not compress the pointy, pointy bullets. Like so. So that's one little modification I've made to adapt a tool for this particular gun and load. And I'll take five reloads with me plus the one in the gun. So even if I should have multiple opportunities, say it droves of hogs that are moving through at one time or another, uh, that's really all the shooting I would expect to have uh, during a single day's hunt. If I do that much shooting with the rifle plus the five loads in the revolver, uh, I will be very fortunate indeed or have had a terrible, terrible day shooting. Well, uh, later in the day when it gets daylight, uh, take this gun out to the range and actually target it in. We have our loading components laid out here at the shooting bench. So, we shall get started. I've already checked, by the way, and made sure that the gun was unloaded. And so now we seat the butt. Now this muzzle is chamfered, so you can actually seat the skirt down in it first. And now, we'll use a short starter, 
Okay, that goes down pretty good. Now the modification I've made to push the bullet down a little further and engrave the rifling. And that goes down very easily, by the way. Okay. And then ram it home. Now this is quite a charge. Uh, you can see the volume of powder uh, contained. So yeah, that's about right. Just to show you, the bolt has a very short throw. And use a little tool here. Put in the primer like that. Pull it out. Okay, primer seated. Now in shooting position, and it's ready to fire. I'm going to aim as near as I can at the dead center of that target and see what happens. Hmm. Primer went, but charge didn't. I'm an author, mainly of outdoor books, and I have an interesting series of e-books of which muzzle loaders for hunters will explain why and how to obtain and use particular guns for muzzle loading hunting. I also have a series of business books, the most recent of which is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age, which is available as soft cover, e-book, and also as an audio book. My novel, Until Death Do You Part, is also available as an audio book from Lantern Audio. Got it away. Now that was a compreciable recoil. We are exactly on line here as you can see, but high. Uh, seven inches or so. Look. I don't know if I want to shoot that much of a charge. I have cut back the charge to 90 grains, and that first shot also reminded me to put on some ear protection. Uh, it didn't ring my ears, but uh, yeah, needed to do that. Now, let's see how this does. Some recoil, but better. We shot a pair of snake eyes with that one staying the same in a vertical sense and moved uh, oh, a couple of inches to the right. That's still a bit much recoil. So I'm going to drop it back to 80 grains. Now I have a load of 80 grains in the gun and I've also taken some adjustment in the scope, uh, 20 clicks to drop it some five inches down. So we should see some change in the strike of the bullet this time. Okay. Now that feels better. I can work with that load. Yeah, 80 grain seems to, seems to be good. So let's see what it did to the target. Well, the bullet did drop, as you see, uh, between the change of the powder charge and the adjust scope adjustments, uh, three inches right and approximately, uh, well, I want to actually have it two inches high, so about uh, one more inch down and three inches left is the adjustment I need to make. This shot I'm shooting from Cadwell's Matrix Rest and I'm doing that so I get maximum precision of shot placement. I don't have terrible much extra powder so I have to make do with what I've got and use it 
as sparingly as I can think I can get away with it. Okay, that shot went a little bit to the left of center and higher, which may be because I supported the barrel. Uh, hmm, yeah. I think I'll have to shoot it without barrel support and I believe it will come down more nearly to the kill zone there in the red squares. Well, we have now achieved a nearly dead center hit. Uh, does that mean we're sighted in? Well, we're getting pretty close, I think. Actually, when it broke, uh, it was a little low and to the right. But Within a few inches of that target, yeah, that will certainly kill deer or anything else. Because I have so little powder left, I'm going to call that one good. Now, if you've got plenty of powder and you've got plenty of time and you enjoy shooting and blah, 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 by all means, shoot more shots. But for me, uh, right now, today, uh, that's going to be it. What have we learned from our shooting today? The Winchester X150 likes about 80 grains of our Blackhorn 209 and the initial load that we started with of 105 grains is fine for this lighter projectile but not for this one. Uh, judging from the shotgun primers that we see here uh, yeah, uh, the load was excessive and the 80 grain load looks very, very normal and so presents no problem at all. Uh, you can shoot that all day. But uh, we've done about as much shooting as I can stand in a single day now. And we did get it in zero, at least for one shot. And that's probably good enough for close range hunting. Now the next time I shoot the gun, probably at a piece of game, I'll bring it back and then we'll shoot it at 100 yards and see what the drop actually is now that it's zeroed at 50. But now this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This older generation of bolt-action muzzleloaders does not have the nearly universal, easily removable breech plug, and that breech plug had obviously become clogged once it was cleared the gun shot just fine. Now using Blackhorn 209, this gun is best cleaned with rubbing alcohol patches and shoot primers before you load to make sure that those ignition passages are clear. Unlike makers like Remington, Ruger, Savage, and Mossberg who modified their cartridge guns to be muzzleloaders, Winchester chose to buy a gun that was designed as a muzzleloader, and this is a much more efficient method to go. Uh, the gun was not popular. It was only offered for a year or so. Loads in the range of 70 to 80 grains of Blackhorn 209 are recommended for this gun and bullet. The XP-150 was designed before guns were made to take 150 grain charges, so be cautious and don't push the loads. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 900 videos, go to www.hoviasmith.com. To learn more about my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To see the latest about my treatment of my novel, Until Death Do You Part, Go to fathertheGrooms.net. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.